Hello friends, now I'll talk about some Sufi mystics like Rabia al-Basri, Amar Khayyam, Maulana Rumi, Amir Khusru, Hafez, Kabir, Lal Ded, Lalan Shah and Iqbal. This module is divided into three sections consisting of background, some Sufi mystics and the relevance of Sufism. I'll begin my lecture by giving a brief background of Sufism. Sufism emerged at the beginning of the 12th century to propagate the doctrines of spiritual liberty, knowledge of truth, love and universal tolerance. Sufism gained popularity among the scholars and the mass because of its universality and contemporaneity. Eliot Miller sees in the foreword to his book entitled Sufism and the Mystical Muslims, I quote, Sufism has always been more open to outside influence than other forms of Islam. In addition to early influence from Christianity, one can find elements of Neoplatonism, Hinduism, Zoroastrianism and other diverse traditions, unquote. Today, we can say that Sufism deals with the inward aspects of Islam. Sufi tradition is basically Islamic mysticism. In essence, the doctrines of Sufism are similar to those of Pantheism and Monism or Advaita Vedanta. This is the background of Sufism. Now, I'll discuss Rabia al-Basri. Rabia Basri is considered to be one of the most influential early female Sufi poets from Basra. Posterity knew her through Fariduddin Atar of Nishapur. Atar was not really very famous like other mystics, but Rumi had referred to him quite a few times. According to Professor Avin Plagfelder, Rabia possessed a degree of autonomy. He says so because Rabia, in spite of being a poor maid, lived on her own terms. In a poem entitled, If I Adore You, she is pleading with humanity to turn to God. Turning to God is not a religious obligation to her. One should adore the divine for its eternal beauty. Her approach to the divine reminds us of Kitz's message in Ode on Aggression An, where Kitz says, Beauty is truth and truth beauty. Let me quote a poem of her entitled, If I Adore You. If I adore you out of fear of hell, burn me in hell. If I adore you out of desire for paradise, lock me out of paradise. If I adore you for yourself alone, do not deny me your eternal beauty. Next, I will focus on Umar Khayyam. He was one of the key figures in the field of knowledge in medieval Persia because of his multidimensional expertise ranging from mechanics, astronomy and mathematics to poetry. He became popular among the Occidental audience due to the translation of his poems by Edward Fitzgerald. He composed verses in quatrains known as Rubaiyat. Rubaiyat is a traditional Persian verse form consisting of a collection of quatrains rhyming A-A-B-A. -A -A. Khayyam dealt with the themes of journey, quest for the divine and transiency of our existence. 
one can notice that the motif of quest is a predominant image in his verses. Khayyam often says metaphorically that God is a potter who shapes us and the humanity is referred to as clay population because we return to earth when our journey is over in this earth. My next focus is on Maulana Rumi. He was a Sufi poet from Konya, Western Turkey. Rumi's father was a philosopher and a lecturer, which made him travel to different places. Rumi used to be his companion during his lecture trips. Therefore, he wanted his son to be a religious preacher as well. Gradually, the mantle of his father fell on Rumi's shoulder. But his fame primarily rests on two books entitled Divane Shams and Masnavi. Divane Shams is a collection of short lyric poem and Masnavi is a narrative poem dealing with Islamic theosophy as propagated by Rumi. Rumi was also a practitioner of Sama, which involved the use of music and poems to induce a meditative mood thereby the listener could concentrate on God. All the mystics believe in intuitive knowledge. They know that the knowledge of the Supreme is intuitive. Next, I will move on to Amir Khusru, who was a versatile personality. Apart from being a medieval Sufi poet, musician and scholar from Patiali UP, he was also the inventor of certain musical instruments like the sitar and the tabla and he is also known as the father of Qawwali, which is the devotional music of the Sufis. As a poet, he always upheld the principles of humanism and love, which culminated into a love for the divine. Khusru's god was Pir Nizam. Pir Nizam was a contemporary Sufi saint and Khusru had a deep reverence for him. Pir Nizam is a dominant image in Khusru's poems. Khusru often worshipped him in such a way as if he himself is the beloved of Nizam. It reminds us of the Radha principle of Vaishnav cult. The next poet of my discussion is Hafiz. Hafiz as a poet mostly composed ghazals and rubayat. Ghazal, as we know, deals with the themes of love, beauty, pain of separation and the pleasure of union. As a mystic, he knew that our ultimate joy lies in renunciation of mundane affairs and our human love gradually evolves towards the divine by your progressive awareness of the cosmic order. Wine is one of the key symbols of his poems. He says in a ghazal, I quote, I paid no heed, worldly affairs I forsake. It is for your beauty, beauty of the world I partake. My bleeding heart has left its mark in the temple. You have every right to wash my body in a wine lake. Here we see that his image of wine is not an ordinary intoxicant. It is a regenerative symbol which cleanses his psyche. It can be equated with the image of divine Soma of Vedic literature. Now I will discuss Lal Dev who is also known as Lal Arifa or Laleshwari. She was a follower of Kashmiri Shaivite tradition as well as Sufi principles. Her poems are referred to as Lal Vax or we can say the words of Lal Ded. She was born in a Pandit family and got married at the age of 12. As she was not happy with her marriage, she left her home at the age of 24 to become a nun. She is regarded as one of the cult figures of non-dual Shaiva tradition of Kashmir. However, the elements of Sufism are also found in her poetry. Therefore, there is a controversy regarding her affiliation to Sufism. According to Sharn Azwadiya, Lal Dade's poetry had influenced both the Hindus and the Muslims as the time and again she urged humanity to rise above caste, creed and color 
to experience the light within. Now, I'll talk about Kabir. Nothing is known about his birth, but the critics agree on one point that he was born in a Hindu family and later adopted by a Muslim weaver from Benares. He was a disciple of Guru Ramananda, who had introduced the doctrines of Ramanuja in North India. Both Ramanuja and Ramananda advocated the principles of personal devotion or bhakti tradition. Kabir had often participated in theological and philosophical arguments with the contemporary Hindu and Muslim scholars, by which he gained an insight of Sufi and Bhakti trends. He never believed in asceticism. As a weaver by profession, he combined vision and industry, which reminds of the integral philosophy of Sri Aurobindo. The integral philosophy aims at combining matter with spirit. Kabir's Doha or the poems depict a wide range of mystical emotion from the loftiest abstractions to the most intimate and personal realization of God expressed in homely metaphors and religious symbols. Here a quote from Kabir, I am neither in Kabba nor in Kailash, neither I am in rites and ceremonies, nor in yoga. If thou art a true seeker, thou shalt at once see me. God is the breath of all breath." Unquote. In the quoted example, we see that Kabir has a synthetic approach towards mysticism. We see the image of Kabba and Kailash are fused in his Doha. Next, we will talk about Lalan Shah. He was a Bengali Baul, saint, songwriter and mystic. Not much is known about his lineage. He was abandoned by his family and Malam Shah rescued him. Lalan was brought up in the household of this Muslim family. He did not receive any formal education. All his songs had been transmitted orally from generation to generation. The members of Rabindranath Tagore's family used to visit him quite often and Jyotirindranath Tagore had also sketched a portrait of him. In fact, that is the only portrait of Lalan available with us. He is regarded as the founder of Baul music. Bauls are the mystic minstrels of Bangladesh and West Bengal. Let me quote some lines from his poem. Quote, what can I say about my neighbor? She has no hands, no feet, no shoulders, no head. Sometimes she floats high up in the sky, sometimes in the water. This quoted poem by Lalan projects his mystic quest for his personal God, who is the cosmic feminine portrayed as the moon in the poem. The poet persona yearns for her everywhere. Lalan is in fact regarded to be an iconic figure of religious tolerance as well. There is a song by Lalan where he says, quote, everyone wonders what's Lalan faith. Lalan says, I have never seen the face of faith with these eyes of mine, unquote. Therefore, we can say that caste and religion are non-existent for Lalan. Next, I will talk about Iqbal. Iqbal was a poet, politician, and philosopher in British India. The key image of his poems is self. According to Iqbal, self or khudi, as explained by him as Ru. Ru is the divine spark in us. The poet persona longs to be united with the divine. And I quote from his poem, quote, The one I was searching for on the earth and in heaven appeared residing in the recesses of my own heart. Now, I'll talk about the relevance of Sufism. As we have come to the close of our discussion, one may conclude by saying that Sufism is extremely relevant in the present context 
because a Sufi mystic believes in the principles of love, tolerance and humanism which are extremely important for the world unity. Thank you.